Hello, Instagram lovelies. Hello, my Facebook lovelies. It is so good to be here with you. I'm Donna Hoffman, and it is time yet again for one of our fantastic You and Me Bonding Over Design Facebook Lives. They call me the Interior Design Advocate because it is my job to take you under my wing, erase the ugly room, erase the disappointing room, and every Tuesday, we stop what we're doing here at the design studio to come out and help you and have this kind of convo. Now, basically, at the Interior Design Advocate, one of our big brands here, we do amazing online courses. This is where women who are working on their own home, who are feeling like they're spinning their wheels, like you're not getting results that you want, things are falling flat, or maybe your results are eh, but you want great, or they're okay, but you want fabulous. Once people take my courses, suddenly they find that they're really, you're really turning your results around. But every Tuesday, I like to stop what I'm doing here in our design studio, and we normally do it at 4 p.m. Eastern to come out and teach you a mini lesson and then take your questions on something. However, I had the wonderful honor of being one of four designers in the Philadelphia region that was selected to spend time with the Kravit um, family and upper management, not only looking at what they have coming up at their New York studios and their design studios for fabric and furnishings, but also to head out uh, on day two to take a look at their fabric archives. Oh my gosh, so this was perfect timing for coming out here and talking to you this tonight. Now we, we move from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. for tonight so I could get back. I just got in from, New, from Manhattan but oh my gosh, these fabric archives were unbelievable. Um, you'll see some a little bit of my sneak peeks at those fabric archives if you follow my design studio Instagram, which is at IDH Designs, IDH, like interiors Donna Hoffman Designs. Um, but anyway, that's just a little side note. I'll, I'll try to spill a couple of beans about that for you now. So anyway, it's so good to be here with you. We're talking about how to put the perfect fabric on your upholstery. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, shouldn't the salesperson have figured that out for me ahead of time? Not necessarily. I have um, come across uh, one instance too many where maybe it was a new salesperson or somebody who wasn't as well versed in a line, and then a beautiful, brilliant woman like you and like you uh, didn't get really what you needed or what you wanted or it wasn't even a, a, an optimal choice. I think it's always wise whenever you are a consumer of anything that you be a wise design consumer if you're consuming design. So let's talk a little bit about picking out fabric for upholstery and why is it such a, a costly endeavor when it comes to upholstery? Well, you need a lot of fabric to cover a piece of upholstery, right? And fabric costs end up being quite a substantial piece of your overall finished product. So fabric generally ranges in cost anywhere from about $30 a yard. You can spend up to over $400 a yard, right? So you really want to try to control yourselves on those fabrics. And when you're looking at, you know, some of the furniture brands near you in a local furniture store or online, definitely you're seeing that those manufacturers are controlling the type of fabrics that they're offering to you so you can get things into a certain price point. But I want to talk to you in this Facebook Live about what goes into picking the right fabric so that you can see a problem in a line, or if you are doing something semi-custom, maybe you are reupholstering something, and maybe you're working with a reupholsterer who really is good at his or her craft, but not so much on selecting fabric. So what do you need to know to stay safe? And if you have questions about upholstery, upholstery fabric, picking the right fabrics for upholstery, I'll take those questions in a little bit. Alrighty, so what you need to know first and foremost just as when I teach um, you about window coverings, did a great course on, on window design, uh, picking your right, the right designs for your project. I talked about in that course, matching your end use to the fiber. I didn't say the fabric, I said the fiber. Now you guys, you will use the word fabric to mean the whole kit and caboodle. In the design industry, the fabric is the weave the fiber is the, the actual thread that it's, it's woven, right? So you can have a velvet, that's the weave, and that velvet could be made of silk. It could be made of polyester, right? Two very different products. Silk is gonna be much more delicate, not gonna like water. Poly is gonna be a lot more resilient and lower cost. So it's very important for you, if you're doing any sort of reupholstery, I want you to please flip your tag on your, on your fabric, and I want you to look at the fiber content. 
the first thing I want you to look at on the back tag before we even dive deeper into the fiber, I want you to look at the abrasion rating. That's also sometimes called the Weizenbeek. It's the durability rating. In a family room, a heavy use, heavy traffic room, certainly where pets are concerned, I do not like to do anything less than 35,000 double rubs. So write that down. Write down the word double rub or Weizenbeek and you can Google it. But basically, that's the abrasion rating. They actually abrade fabric to see how long it takes for it to start to break down. So write that down. Family room, 35,000 Weizenbeeks, 35,000 double, double rubs or the Weizenbeek rating of 35,000. For a living room, a room that doesn't get quite as much traffic, quite as much use, you know, I'll do a 25,000 if I really love the fabric. But sometimes you'll see these 15,000 double rub fabrics, like a fine silk. What do you do with those? You put those only on the look, but don't touch furniture. Maybe a beautiful bench in, a, you know, again, in a living room that doesn't get used very often. Okay? So I want you to pay attention to the durability and then i want you to think about matching the end use to the fiber be careful of silk it does not like water it does not like sunlight so again a delicate fabric very dressy fabric uh, fiber rather delicate fiber so you really be selective in how you use silk if at all um, i also want you to think about linen linen is a great great fiber but it does have a little crush a little bit of wrinkle to it you're either going to love it or not love it Think some of the best fabrics for you to use uh, are, po are poly, you know, cotton poly blends. Cottons uh, are terrific as well. If you are doing some reupholstery, I want you to please ask your upholsterer, do you think this fabric should be backed? So when you have, I should have had a piece of fabric out here. Mm, I don't. Maybe I do. Let's see. Yep. Okay. So when you have um, a piece of fabric, if you pull it in, in the diagonal, pull it on the diagonal, um, that'll help you see how much stretch and how much give there is. You don't want a lot of stretch and a lot of give in a fabric. If it seems kind of stretchy, but it's the right durability for you, backing it, putting some like a kind of a reinforced backing, a latex backing will help um, stiffen the fabric a little bit so that if it's on stretched across a cushion, you're not going to see that dimpling and that rippling that starts to happen. So if you're doing some reupholstering, you're going to have to be doing a little bit more of the wise um, selection, right? Your upholsterer may not be in that position to, to advise you as much as if you're working, let's say, in a, in, a, in a furniture store where they already have fabrics assigned to a particular line. But I think it's still wise to ask the question. Again, a couple of years ago, I had a lovely client come to me. She worked with an excellent furniture store in the area and they put silk on her kitchen chairs. What were they thinking? Just told you a little early, earlier, silk is a fiber, beautiful, but it doesn't like water. What's it doing in a kitchen? A kitchen with young children yet. So you can only imagine how these chairs were a disaster and very quickly. So I, I love furniture stores and I love furniture store salespeople, but somewhere in the country is the worst furniture store salesperson and you have to hope that you don't meet that person, just like, it's like you hope you don't meet the worst dentist in the country when they have their hands in your mouth. You wanna make sure that you're a savvy consumer so that you know what to look for when you're doing some furniture shopping. Now, what do you do if you have pets? There is no tried and true fabric that loves being around claws that scratch, claws that dig, right? Nobody wants, no fabric wants to, you know, be peed on, sorry. Um, so you have to definitely look for very durable fabrics. And with pets, I always try to avoid anything that has a very slubby weave that I think, you know, sharp nails or sharp claws could kind of get caught on. So chenilles, for example, probably not a great choice for you with pets. People ask me about leather with pets. It depends upon how well behaved your pet is and how well uh, clipped those nails are because you can puncture leather with sharp claws, right? You know, nothing is indestructible. Um, but certainly with pets, you wanna go for as high an abrasion rating as you possibly can. And you may wanna think about doing indoor outdoor fabric if you're reupholstering something that will add cost those fabrics are definitely definitely more costly 
The last thing I want to talk to, we've talked a little bit about abrasion rating, durability. We've talked a little bit about getting that fiber to be um, correct for you as well, or optimal. I also want you to think about the, if you're doing pattern. Now, most of you are not doing pattern on a sofa, but you might choose to do pattern on an ottoman or on a chair. I want you to know that tufting is really hot right now, but not and it's always gorgeous, love tufting, but not every fabric likes to be tufted. When you tuft a fabric, first of all, you will drive up the cost of your piece of upholstery because imagine, here's my fabric, but when I take a deep tuft, look at how much fabric gets shoved into that right before that button would be assigned. So you use up about six extra inches of fabric for every deep button tuft. That's a lot of fabric, but certainly a solid fabric tufts very easily, but many Printed fabrics or pattern fabrics don't tuft very well. A very linear graphic print, do not try to tuft that. You're going to make it look terrible and really wonky. Um, I forget the manufacturer I was talking to, but they showed me some pictures on their problem uh, page on their, on their internal website um, that showed some terrible fabrics that designers had actually tried to put on tufted furniture. Maybe they were young in the industry. I don't know. But oh my gosh, they were horrible looking. So you got to make sure you don't ever try to tuft something that's very linear, uh, very graphic, certainly not a stripe. I don't care how wide the stripe is. If you're going to do a tuft and you really love a pattern fabric, try to make it sort of a, a, cur a curvy, uh, a curvilinear kind of um, pattern and um, a very small repeat small pattern, certainly safe to tuft as well. Alrighty. So the other thing I want to tell you about pattern is that you need to think about something called the flow match. And that's how the fabric will pattern will flow off the back of the chair, down the seat cushion and down the front rail. You want to make sure you see a nice continuation of that pattern. Um, if you look in a store like Home Goods, love Home Goods. It's a great option. But if, I'd love for you the next time you're there, if you see a really low cost print chair, I want you to notice how mismatched the patterns can be, because it's a lot of labor and a lot of fabric waste to actually beautifully match that patterning all the way down a chair. So in in the lower price points manufacturers just don't have the wherewithal to do it. So that's why you can see some pretty terrible flow matching happening there. Okay. So um, if there are any questions, feel free to type in a question. I'll be happy to talk to you about fabric questions, upholstery questions that you have. While I'm waiting to, um, for any questions to come in either on Instagram or on Facebook, let me just tell you about a couple of exciting things. I do want you to know that next week we are talking about the topic is your home the ultimate selfie. Your home, the ultimate selfie, that's all I'm going to tell you for now. Um, and I do want to tell you that the Design Diva Conference is happening. We are doing it. It is this September, September 28th and 29th. It's a day and a half filled with different design workshops just for you, just for you design lovers. You're working on your own home. You want to take a deep immersion into de decorating and design. Walk away with immediately actionable strategies, hacks, and tips to gorgeously up-level your own design. Great workshops. We'll have some guest designers coming in for a great panel. They'll be doing some, some teaching through the panel. You can ask questions. We'll do, we're going to do a lot of audience Q&A throughout the conference, so you'll really get to be seen and heard. And you'll be able to not only do some wonderful inspiration intake, um, but just gathering with other like-minded women who love design and decorating as much as you do. And it's a way for us to be in the same room so I can really teach you and take you on a much deeper journey as I take you through some key pillars in design so that you can go home and immediately start to beautify different areas of your home, different rooms in your home. Um, so excited about one of the color workshops I'm doing with you as well. So, um, And we have a very special promotional price in place right now. The regular price um, on the conference is $1,295, but for the next seven days, we still have a promotional price of $399 for a day and a half, and I'm feeding you. Gorgeous workshops for a day and a half in Philadelphia. The Rittenhouse Hotel is a posh hotel, and as my way of saying thanks and here's a hug, we're, we're preserving this promotional price until... Uh, Wednesday the 15th of May at 11.59 uh, p.m. And then the price whoop, 
goes up. So I definitely would love to see you be able to take advantage of that special pricing. And if you want more information on it, go to my website. Com. That's the interior design advocate.com and go to the events page and that's how you can read up more on the conference. Okay, so I don't see any questions coming in Facebook. on do I have questions on Facebook? Oh, hang on. Maybe there are questions coming in from Facebook. I'm getting a little a little voice is telling me. No, I'm not seeing any questions from Facebook. Yes. Do we have well they're not in my feed. Really? My feed isn't working. I, uh, I'm having a feed problem. Feed me. All right, we're going to have some questions written up, sent over, lobbed over the net to me. So while I'm waiting for that to happen, let me tell you about the fabric archives at Kravit. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so you walk into this room. It's dry. It's like desert dry in this room, and it's cold, so it's temperature controlled and humidity controlled as well. And you just have all of these, like, long, thin drawers that are built into this giant wall-to-wall -wall floor to ceiling case and they're labeled 16th century fabrics 17th century damasks 18th century spanish blah 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 i mean unbelievable the first drawer they took us to were coptic designs one piece of fabric was hold on to your hats this is the oldest piece of fabric i've ever seen in a fabric archive it was from the year 200 bc you got that right and then and then the youngest fabric in that drawer was um, 500 AD. I mean, it was incredible. So you might be thinking, well, what the heck? Why, why does a, a gorgeous, you know, modern day design company that, that specializes in fabulous fabric and furniture, why, why do they have these collections of fabric from all over the world? Um, you know, Asia, I mean, every continent is represented because the fabric designers at these companies go into the archives and they do product research. And that's where the beautiful things that are in your home, the beautiful drapery that's in your dining room, could have been inspired by a, a Portuguese velvet from, you know, from the 16th century. Or it could have been inspired by a great, uh, you know, African textile weave from, you know, from the early 20th century. The designers will go in and they might look at just a lower corner of, of a print, blow it up to a big overscale something and recolor it and suddenly it's so modern. It's amazing what just recoloring these fabrics, what, what that does. And sometimes they'll change the motif. Sometimes an animal image might be like a little scary looking. Um, so they'll, they'll soften things down. But oh my gosh, and there were, there were, I was one of four designers from the Philadelphia and, and New Jersey area selected for this, uh, this wonderful time with Kravit. We were like kids in a candy shop, I gotta tell you. Oh my goodness, it was spectacular. And I, I posted a couple of pictures on my Insta stories for my um, the luxury design brand, that luxury design company I, I run. Um, and that Instagram is at, at at IDH Designs, my gosh, it's late, I'm tired. Um, at IDH Designs, dot, at IDH Designs, there's no dot com. I'm sorry, I'm a little tired. There was a, a nice dinner last night with the Kravit family, nice family and their team, so. All right, so Sydney, Sydney, my wonderful Sydney is saying, is fabric protection really effective in repelling stains? Do you recommend it? I do, Sydney. I mean, it definitely it definitely makes a difference. It definitely helps. Here's the thing to know: um, no fabric wants to have grape juice on it, sitting on it, or red wine, or oh, orange soda. Mm, don't even serve that if you have you know really light furniture. Um, it's fabric. It's fiber. It will it will always lose against something much more um, intensely colorful and filled with a dye, right? Um, so you always want to clean up spills as quickly as possible. You want to teach your children to, to treat your things respectfully. I know it's hard, you know, when they're toddlers, cutie patooties, and heaven knows we had a sofa for about all of, what, two weeks before Anna fell asleep on it, Stephen, and she peed on it. She was just learning how to, you know, use the potty. It happens. So you clean things up. You do the best you can. But fabric protection definitely makes a difference. Um, if you have sensitivities in, in your home, just be careful, Sydney, because some of that can off gas a bit. Um, so sometimes people feel like they're a little sensitive around some of those things. 
Better to have it done before it's delivered into your home. Some manufacturers don't offer that um, in in store or in their in their facility, and they'll want to do it in your home. But if you can have it done during production, all the better. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll actually have the the bolt of fabric treated if a client wants that before we actually you know apply it. All right. So better to do it um, during production as opposed to what's called aftermarket. Hope that helps you, Sydney. Um, and Sydney, I'm enjoying everything you're posting in the private groups. You are absolutely just adorable, and I love your enthusiasm and design and just enjoying you. Alrighty, so this is an Instagram question from goodkid1081. I like that. Okay, how to choose pillows for two for a two cushion sofa? Example sizes, textures, how many? Oh. We almost shot a great video about this. Um, we're still going to do it for our YouTube channel. I have the best props in the world to show this to you with. So I'm now going to have to do it with my hands. It's not going to be as effective. So I promise, good kid, 1081, we're going to get this shot for in a, somewhere in our YouTube sequence. Do we just not do to shoot just yet? Oh, Steve, my feed's working now. It's good. Something it woke up. Um, All righty. So here's the thing that you need to know, good kid, 1081. Pillows on a two cushion sofa, and I don't know if that is an 84 inch three person sofa or a little 60 inch, you know, love seat, right? You can do both as a two cushion. Make sure that the number of cushions you put out there are not going to be overwhelming to handle, and make sure that you are considering the size of the cushion relative to the, the inside back height of your, of your, of your sofa. So if you have a really low back sofa, maybe you want some really bold, you know, 22 inch cushions, one on each side, deck pillows. So they just kind of break up and above that sofa. Or if you're doing, let's say, uh, two and two, two on each arm, think about it. Do you want two 18s where they, they're the exact same size, womp and womp? Or do you want something where it just kind of, one is a little shorter than the other? Maybe you want to do an 18 and a 16 or a 20 and an 18. So my best, recommendation for you in terms of choosing the sizes for those cushions is to think about what is sitting in front of the height but what what is the height that's the anchoring height and what do you want sitting in front of it okay do you want to break above that height the, the, the hard back of the sofa or do you want it to be a little shorter uh, in terms of how to pick out the perfect fabric for your sofa cushions or for de decorative pillows. That's a bigger question. I answer that in my fabric um, lesson in my Decorating Genius course. It's a big answer. Um, let me see if I can say to you quickly. Um, you should be, when you're putting together your full fabric and color plan when you're doing a room, you're definitely putting together those, those throw cushions. That's part of every design board we do. When we do a fabric pull here in our studio, we are absolutely thinking about where are we broadcasting color? Where are we broadcasting pattern, if at all? How are these patterns going to play together? Which pattern do I want a lot of? Which one do I want a little sprinkle of? And I'm also thinking in terms of size of pillows, right? Um, so hopefully that answers you. And if it doesn't, good kid 1081, you send me in a follow-up question. There's that. All right, let me see what else I can read here. Um, Susan wants to know if this will be on YouTube. You missed the first 15 minutes. Susan, where you been? Yes, we have started to put all of our um, Facebook Lives on YouTube because we realized that you guys couldn't always make them live. or And even though they stay up on Facebook for a while, you, know, you can lose track of them. So you can catch up on all of the Facebook um, uh, Lives. In fact, by all means, when you go to YouTube, and look up the the uh, the interior design advocate on YouTube to find all of our videos. Not only these, but the ones that we do as more planned lessons with some props and some questions of the week, that sort of thing. But subscribe to us so you know when a new video has been um, posted. So thank you, Susan. Susan is also asking how to recover your favorite reading chair and footstool. The chair was probably purchased in the 40s or the 50s. Yum. Is there a particular fabric that would be best uh, for of uh, the best look for? I was looking for a canvas or something in a modern, maybe geometric print. I love that. I love the idea of taking 
um, a frame that's very traditional and putting something super modern on it. That little purple chair back there, we've been meaning to recover that in our studio for forever. Katie and I just haven't had the time to do it. You know, the shoe maker's children go without shoes. But what we want to do, and we were going to actually have you guys pick the fabric. <laughs> we just haven't had the time. We've been that busy. We're going to we're going to have you vote on it and we're going to do some sort of really cool modern you know geometric fabric and maybe we may even have the frame painted or something. We can do a little design together. So I love taking something modern and putting it on something older. So Susan, I say go for it and make sure you watch that this whole video Susan because I talk about glasses are dirty. I, um why do I have paper towel here cuz I thought I was going to use this as a visual aid about a bolt of fabric. I should I should actually still give you that lesson because I want to talk to you Susan if you are reupholstering. I want you to be real careful to tell your reupholsterer if you want to run that fabric, run it off the bolt, or if you want to railroad it. What does that mean? Pretend that this little pathetic piece of uh, bit of uh, paper towel, pretend that this is a roll of fabric. Fabric is usually on a, a bolt of fabric, usually on a 54 inch bolt. That's how wide fabric for home is when it's woven. Coming off the bolt means just what it says. It's just run right off the bolt, right? But what if, what if Susan was doing a really cool wide stripe, like a, a like a like a cabana stripe, right? On a on a bench. And rather than having the stripe run off the bolt, what if she wanted it to run the long way on the bench? You'd tell an upholsterer that by saying, I want you to railroad the fabric. This comes right off the bolt and it was laid right on your fabric as it would right on your fat furniture as it comes off the bolt. But if you wanted them, if you want your upholsterer to turn the fabric, that's called doing a railroad on it. Okay, so just be real clear with your upholsterer how you want things laid out on that, whatever you're doing. And in Susan's case, it's a chair, but also there was a footstool. So make sure that your upholsterer knows how you want that fabric directionally placed on your footstool. Alrighty. Okay. Sandra is saying, what do you think of cotton as an upholstery fabric? I love it. I think it's great. Definitely though, Sandra, if you, did, if you missed the beginning of this Facebook live, make sure that you have the right uh, Weizenbeek rating, the white, right durability. I don't want a 15,000 double rub cotton on in your family room uh, or a heavy use, you know, reading chair. Even if it's cotton, it's got to be uh, the, the right um, abrasion factor. So go back and watch this video if you missed it. Sydney saying, thank you. You're welcome, my little yeah. Sydney. Oh, oh my goodness. I have all these questions. Last, last Oh, last couple of questions here. What fibers are more prone to pilling? Donna SML wants to know. Well, you know, that's a great question. In, 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 in women's clothing, you know that nylons often will do that, that pilling. Um, generally speaking, fabric does not make it into the home textile world unless it has it, it, it is of the right um, quality for upholstery right you won't see it in an upholstery store so I don't expect to see pilling on, on a home product in fact Steve have you ever seen a pilling on a on a on a home sheets. home textile generally sheets and when it's sheets it's a not there's a not polyester. it's a polyester uh, or a poly blend that's a whole sheet thing but with home five fabric I don't think you have to worry about that Donna so I'm gonna tell you not to worry about that um, the, the patio lady, that's a cute handle. Patio lady wants to know, what can you share about Sunbrella and other outdoor fabrics? I find the current selection limited. Oh, get ready patio lady, because at the furniture market, there was a lot of new introduction in the way of, um, of indoor outdoor. In fact, Steve, do you remember the name of that, that newest brand that, that they were pushing down there during high point? Mm. No, 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 no. Ah, it, it's out of my head. Um, if I think of it, I will post it. Indoor-outdoor fabrics have come such a long way. The hand is really improving, meaning um, what it feels like to the touch. A lot of them, out, they feel like indoor plushy fabrics. The beauty of indoor-outdoor fabrics, if you have pets, if you have a two-story you know, room that has a lot of, of sunlight coming into it, the beauty is, is that you... You, you use that fabric instead of just a lovely cotton uh, like Sandra's going to be using because you don't want to have fading. When you are working with traditional home cloth, you have dye that is applied after it's woven. 
right? So it's applied topically with solution. It's called solu with with um, indoor outdoor fat fibers or fabrics, I should say. Picture a pasta maker where you put all your your chemicals together to create the fiber, the thread, and the color is mixed into that solution. And, and of course, it's it's a man made, so it's extruded with the color in it. And then that is woven together. So there's no secondary application of the dye. That's why that color is there and it won't bleach down. Um, so I think they're, they've come such a long way. And listen, we're looking at doing the beach home. Everything's going to be in indoor outdoor fabric in that, in that house for sure. The downside is they're a little more costly. They can be 20 to 30% more expensive than the same exact look in a non-indoor outdoor. So you might say, oh, it was 20 to 30%. Well, you know, 22 yards on a sofa, that can that can add some significant cost. And then if you're doing every piece of upholstery in a room in that, that can really add some significant cost. But I am very much pro in favor of those indoor outdoor fabrics and i think they're only going to keep getting better and better because you the design consumer brilliant gorgeous women that you are you're demanding more and more performance more and more options um, and i think you'll be pleased with what the furniture and textile industry is going to be coming up with for you in the in the next uh, 12 to 18 months so there you go um, Sydney is asking, don't want to hog the feed, but you spoke of pillows. Inevitably, when I'm sitting on a sofa with many pillows, they always have to be tossed on the floor to sit comfortably. You know, Sydney, I don't disagree with you. I have some clients that are very petite, and they actually need that pillow behind them to push them forward enough so they sink into the sofa, but their feet still land on the floor, and then their six foot two husband doesn't need the pillow behind him and he's next to her on the sofa. So I think it depends on who you are and I think it depends on um, also your personal preferences. I, there, I, I can only handle so many pillows personally on a sofa. They start to drive me nuts and I don't like the look of everything disheveled. I probably have like a little, I don't know, pillow OCD or design OCD. But um, I know I have so many clients who love a very pillowy, plushy kind of feeling. So I think it's a personal thing. Bunny Benjamin 1212 on Instagram said, I was told once that animal prints act as a neutral in a room. Do you agree? Bunny, do I agree? Bunny, my daughter Anna was 16 months old. I came home from the store with a cute little denim jumpsuit for her. And the collar had this great little leopard print on it. And I said, hey, Anna, look at this. Look what mommy found. It was on sale. Blah, 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 blah. And look at this. What do you think? And she looked at it, and with a cute little smile, she said, I know where that. 16 months old. I said, what do you mean you know where that? I was so shocked. She said, I know like animal print. I thought, you came out of my belly, and you know like animal print. Happy to say that Anna is now 23 years old. Girl appreciates a good animal print. What do I say, Bunny, about animal print? I say, go for it. I think... They are phenomenal. I think they can act as a neutral in a room. I think they can work into so many mixes. And there are so many great animal prints that are even being done in colors now. In the last, you know, five to seven years, we've seen that happening as well. And when I was at Kravit, I could tell you some of the things that are coming out and launching in the next 12 to 24 months, I saw some pretty colorful, you know, two color but unusual color animal prints. So I love it. I say go for it. And I think animal prints always look very confident and bold in a room. So I say do it, do it, do it, and more do it. And in terms of trend with um, your upholstered fabrics, I'll tell you that, you know, when we were talking to some of the, the Kravit designers, they were saying, look, and then we were in front of this giant table with all these memos. Um, that's a fabric sample, you know, spread out in color. It looks like rainbows, but it was all cream gray and the blues and they said these are always the top sellers and then we have little sections of green and little sections of millennial blush millennial pink um trying to get a little bit of orange out of this you know group trying to get a little bit of you know yellow goldenrod out of that group but for the most part the big sellers remain creams grays and blues still a hot and continuing trend all righty all right, my dear, so I've got to start skedaddling. I know I overstayed my welcome. Um, I'm going to, uh, it looks like we've wrapped up on questions here. We've wrapped up on questions there. 
If you are thinking of joining us for the Design Diva Conference, September 28th and 29th, please, I'd love to see you there, but take advantage of the special pricing. You have another seven days on that $399 price. The reg price is $1,295, also an, an amazing value at $1,295 for this one and a half day design immersion, this soul feeding design immersion. You'll be with like-minded women. We'll be looking at great hacks and tips and strategies. We'll be doing some great takeaway and great teaching. We'll be having some great teaching from me and some of my team and my experts. So I can't wait to see you if you'll be joining us in September. And that price is valid through this Wednesday, 11.59 p.m. Eastern. And again, if you want more information on the conference, Next go to, Wednesday. hmm? Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Sorry, not this Wednesday. Next Wednesday. I'm tired. Been a long two days in New York. Uh, go to the interiordesignadvocate.com and go to the events page, and then uh, you can see what's, what's it all about. There you go. All right, peeps, listen. I am beyond exhausted. So I'm going to sign off now. Thank you so much for being with me. Next week, we're talking about your home, the ultimate selfie. That's all I'm going to we'll leave it at that. And I can't wait to see you then. All right. So have a great night. Hope you sleep well. Hope I sleep well. And I will see you next week, dolls. Lots of love. Big hug to you. Take care. Bye-bye.